Hey everybody, what is up? Gary Simon here. So today we're gonna be checking out some future CSS and it is very, very future CSS, unfortunately. Um, and that is the CSS subgrid, all right? So the CSS grid, if you're not familiar with it, you can do a, a search on my channel. I have a lot of tutorials and crash courses on the grid, just the way to structure your layout, the latest and greatest way to do so. Um, but there's something called the subgrid, which addresses a problem when it contains, or when it, when it, when it pertains rather, not contains, when it pertains to having nested grids and trying to line those grid child items up with the main grid. That sounds really confusing, I, 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 I'm sure it is, but it will make sense if you stick with me and watch through the rest of this tutorial so that you can see what the use case for it is, what the problem is, and how the subgrid actually solves it. Now here's the, the, the bad part. Like I said, it's future CSS. If we look here at caniuse.com, it's only at 3.47% which sucks. Um, as you can see, no other browsers support it with exception to Firefox. So Firefox, we're gonna be using Firefox to demonstrate this. I will also show you what our result looks like in Chrome. Um, and it does break the layout, unfortunately. Um, but again, this is just, you know, a type of series I like to do to show you, you know, what the future of CSS will look like. And that way you'll have, you know, kind of a, uh, at least a little bit of a jump start when it is made available to other browsers. So, as always, subscribe and let's get started. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Linode. Now, as a front end developer or a designer, you know that you need a personal portfolio. And if you use a website builder like Wix or Squarespace, they lack total customization and they lock you into using their platform. But to be a pro, you need to use the tools that the pros actually use. So level up, start building your own projects and your own portfolio on an enterprise level content management system like WordPress or Drupal. Now, real web development sometimes requires knowledge of spinning up servers, managing domain names, and setting up an occasional staging environment. And there's no better or simpler way to learn the ins and outs of hosting your website than with Linode Cloud Hosting. Linode Cloud Hosting makes it as easy as possible for you to deploy a WordPress or Drupal website in seconds with a free Linode one-click app marketplace. So click on the very top link here in the YouTube description to get your free Linode account along with $20 of free hosting and all the tools that you need to build enterprise class websites. All right, so we're just gonna get started here. I already have uh, a little bit of code set up. Of course, it's very simple. We see that we have an index.html, just quick boilerplate, nothing happening too much inside of here. Um, oh, we need to link up, I forgot to do this, my uh, CSS, main.css file. So in our CSS folder, we have that main.sass that I'm using. Um, we're using the live sass uh, plugin along with uh, my index.html open with live server, which I already have going. And you can find that stuff here, live sass compiler, live server, if you wanna follow along, whatever. Um, so let's go ahead and let us get our HTML markup first. And of course, this is very quick, there's not much. I'm gonna be using M abbreviations. I have a tutorial on that, a crash course of sort. Just search on my YouTube channel for that, Emmet, E-M-M-E-T. It just makes HTML and writing it quicker. Um, so we have a, a class of container, um, and we're gonna have a section here with a class of top. And then inside of there, we're gonna have an H1 element that says hi, okay, whatever, no big deal. And then also we're gonna have a second column just with a paragraph that says um, wait, a class called side, and we'll just say whatever, <laughs> literally whatever. I'm horrible at ad copy, anyhow. Um, so, okay, what we have here is, is gonna be a grid container, and it's just gonna have two columns, one right here, one right here, all right? And our container right here is going to be a display grid, and it's also gonna have 12 different columns, and we will use um, our CSS grid properties to make this span a certain number of those columns, and then this one a certain number as well. So there's no nested grids happening here. This is just for reference. So let's go ahead and do another one just beneath it, because uh, this is a real world you know, scenario in which it would be helpful to have the subgrid. So another one um, underneath it. So we're gonna have section right here with a class of bottom, all right? So we have top and bottom. And inside of there, the very first, uh, inside of that column rather, we're gonna have another class called content. And we're gonna wrap in an H1, my title. And then we'll also do 
uh, paragraph of lorem, like 12, so like 12 words of lorem ipsum text. All right, outside of that, there will be another column, all right? So we're gonna do image, source equals images, forward slash bg dot jpg. I don't yet have that, but I will get it there momentarily. And then also outside of that, oh, this is supposed to be inside of that section, I'm sorry. So what we have here, it's a little bit confusing right now. We have a container here. It sounds like something just broke up there. We also have a section here, which is gonna be the left column of this particular grid container. Inside of this, this right here of div class bottom, that's gonna be another display grid. And that's where we're going to target our subgrid on. And the subgrid will translate to this right here, and this is gonna be its own column, and then this will be another column inside of this grid right here, if that makes sense. But don't worry, once I start showing you in the browser, it'll probably come a little bit easier. Outside of this, we're just gonna have it aside, like a sidebar. So we'll just do H2 sidebar, that's it. This is all our markup is to demonstrate what's happening here. If you're confused, don't worry. Like I said, when I start showing you the result here in the browser, which is what this is what currently is, this crap right here, it should start to make more sense. All right, so now let's get to the fun stuff, the SAS or the CSS rather. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm going to just put in some quick body stuff here. So margin zero, I'm gonna reset that to zero. Font family, I think we'll use new Nito. I have that installed. And I'm also a height of 100 viewport height. Also our image, we're gonna do width of 100%. Our H1, we'll do a margin of zero. Yes, I'm looking over here because I have a, a code reference monitor. Trust me, you don't wanna see me doing this stuff on the fly, I'll screw up and it'll just be boring. Um, right here for container, we're gonna do, like I said, um, display grid. And that's our first element and this appears twice, right here and right here, all right? So display grid, we're gonna have grid template columns repeat 12 auto. So we're doing like a, a 12 column grid, all right? So this is a common thing, um, especially, this has been around for a long time. Sometimes there's 16, sometimes people prefer to use that. Um, you know, Bootstrap, I think it's like one of the first frameworks to, to make use of, uh, you know, grid-based uh, columns and stuff. We're gonna do a width here, just a flat 1200 pixels. I'm not making this responsive. This is just for you know demonstration purposes. And then we're gonna do margin, zero, and auto, just to center it. All right, so here's what we have so far. Very ugly, yes it is indeed. All right, so let's reference uh, our first element. Um, by the way, I'm gonna go ahead and pause and get that image in here real quickly. You know what, maybe I won't pause. I'm just so lazy. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you while I do this. So I'm gonna reveal this file over here, copy that, we're gonna to go to subgrid, we are going to paste that in. There we go, I didn't even have to stop. Okay, so we just have a background here, it's just some weird <laughs> image here. Okay, so let's see what it looks like now. Okay, still ugly, you don't know what's going on. All right, so first let's take our top, our top element, and this our top one isn't really pertinent to the purposes of this tutorial. Um, it, it's not gonna have the subgrid in it, but I'm just gonna do display grid. We're gonna do grid hyphen column. And one, it's gonna span the first column all the way to the fifth column. Remember, there's 12 of them here by default, all right? So what that'll do, it's not, it's not gonna be too visual at this point because we have different back, we don't have background colors yet, but you'll see in a second. Um, we're gonna do a background of black here. So background black, we could see what that did. So if we remove this, you can see it changes. If all of a sudden we bring that back, it gets wider. Now I'm using Firefox, so let's hit Control Shift I, we'll get out the dev console, and over here, very, it's kind of hard to see. Yeah, I can, I can increase this stuff so you can see it better. We can see it gives us the option to overlay grid, all right? And it'll, it'll let us do this um, to any type of grid container that it finds. And it has options like display line numbers, display areas, and all that stuff. Um, it's kind of hard to see right here, but you can see from one all the way to five, see if I can increase this a bit, from column one to column five, it is now span that amount. All right, so also, we're gonna make the color white, height, we'll just do like 30 viewport height, and padding will be 1.5 M units. So this is what that looks like now. All right, 
So now let's focus on, oh yeah, by the way, I have a paragraph of side right here. So let's just, I'm gonna copy and paste that rule set right here. It's gonna go from uh, five to 13. It's gonna say background yellow, margin zero, padding one EM. So now this goes all the way out, all right? Okay, so what we wanna do now is focus on this one. Let's say for our purposes, we want to have uh, where it says my title in this lorem ipsum, this is all inside of um, a, a div element with a class of content. We wanted that to be like right here. And then we want this image right here to start right here at this fifth grid column, okay? That would be hard to do because the way this markup is written is we have a embedded display grid inside of here. So these elements won't translate into uh, the, the columns that are defined on the parent grid. So that's probably a little confusing. I'll show you what I mean though. So let's, let's, let's define our bottom grid here. So we have our bottom. We're gonna say display grid. Now remember, bottom is a class that's attached right here. So we already have a parent grid. Here's our second grid. So it's gonna be another grid. And we're gonna do grid hyphen column one through nine, all right? So now we see this situation right here. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna put in content. And our content, remember, is holding our H1 element and the paragraph element. We're gonna say grid column one through five. We'll do a padding of 1.5 M units. Then we're also going to take our image which is also a child element inside of that secondary uh, grid, we'll say five through nine. All right, so what we have here, by the way, let's fix this aside right here. I wanna define that real quick before I really get to the meat and bones of this tutorial. We're gonna do grid column nine through 12, and then we'll do a padding of 1.5 M units, and then our H2, we'll say margin zero, just to get rid of any of the margin. All right, so this isn't really quite working out the way we want it to. We want this element all the way over here, right? So there's a way to do it, and it involves a lot of math, and it's annoying, right? The way to fix this is to put grid template columns subgrid. Now, if we save this, it doesn't work. And of course, that's how life kind of works sometimes. So let me make sure I'm getting all this markup correct. Oh yes, and I figured out the issue. This is supposed to be not auto, but one FR, a fractional unit. There we go. So let me just back up real quick, and I wanna remove this, this, this right here just to show you what it truly looks like. We can see it's off, all right? This isn't what we want because we want, you know, the aesthetic and the flow of our layout. Um, perhaps this is what a UI designer provided us as a front-end developer for a mock-up, and we want it to be pixel perfect. We want this right here to be in line with this column, but that's hard to do because this, we don't have the access, we don't have the use of the subgrid, right? There's ways to do it, and it involves, like I said, a lot of math to figure out how to position these correctly. But with the subgrid property, we can fix all that. So we bring it back, save it, and there we go. So the width and the columns, and by the way, this all applies to grid template rows as well. So columns is, you know, stacked like this from left to right, and right to left. And then columns, you could put subgrid on grid template uh, rows would be vertically stacking them in the same type of orientation. I don't have to show that variation as well because it works exactly the same way. Um, so we can go ahead and, for instance, um, if we want this one to start right here, we could do that. So what we can do is we'll say content, uh, where does it say, or image, yeah. We can just say instead of five to nine, we can say seven to nine. And there it goes, it works perfectly and it's in line with the parent grid up here. So we can do like four to nine. There we go. I mean, we can do, you know, five to 
eight. And it just works perfectly. Now, also, um, just to show you what this looks like in like uh, Internet Explorer for, I mean, not in Explorer. What am I talking about, Internet Explorer? I'm so used to things breaking in Internet Explorer. I just say Internet Explorer. I didn't mean that. Um, what we're going to, uh, I'm going to place this in here. This is what it looks like, unfortunately, in Google Chrome. Um, it doesn't work. There's no subgrid support at the po at this point in time for Chrome. All right. So I uh, again, if I go to Can I use um, subgrid? There it is. We'll see. Like I I would show you at the beginning, um, it's only at 3.47 percent. But hopefully Chrome gets it um, integrated because as you can see, it's very helpful. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that. You learned something new. Of course, you can't really use it right now, but you know you'll be prepared. You will be prepared when we get to that point in time in which you can use the lovely and very exciting subgrid. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't. Click the bell notification icon, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.